Hey guys, Razorblade Mango here, and today I am going to just ruminate on what could possibly be shown during the Xbox Plus Bethesda E3 2021 conference that's going to happen in a couple weeks at the time of this recording. And the reason that I'm recording this so early in advance is because I'm basically going to be going on a media blackout for the next few weeks until E3. I don't want to see any leaks, any more leaks than I've already seen. I don't want to see any rumors. I just want to go into these conferences with like a fresh head and just naturally react to the things that I'm seeing. That's kind of how I've always done E3 and that's how I will continue to do E3. That's how I basically do any of these like big upcoming events where the leaks just start popping up like holes on a ship. So, the other reason is that, uh, well, not the other reason, but I guess the other thing I have to mention is that I unfortunately will not be able to do a live stream of the event because I have prior commitments the day and time that it is happening. So, in my absence, I will defer you to please watch um, Claylex's stream. I think he's going to be live, like, reacting to it with Richard, I believe. So, please, like, the people that would normally watch my stream, go watch Claylex's stream. I'm sure he and Richard, will, Richard, if they're going to do it, they'll do a fantastic job in my absence. And after that, you will get, once I have time to actually sit down and watch the conference in its entirety, you will get a live reaction video of me watching it. It won't be, it just won't be a live stream this time for this particular thing. It's not my choice. I just, I have prior commitments to this, but I'm sorry that I won't be able to do my normal live stream thing with the Xbox conference. That was one of the things I was looking forward to doing, but you know, sometimes things in life don't line up the way you want them to. It just happens. So as far as what Xbox could show, um, well, actually, I, the thing that I, I find interesting about Xbox's show this year is that they're not starved for options. They have a lot of things in the works, and I'm pretty sure they have a lot of things that we don't know about that are in the works as well. You know, they have a number of Bethesda projects that I'm sure are in the works. You know, you got the rumors of them working on that Star Wars game. But I think I think they're working on the Mandalorian. I think that was the rumor that Bethesda's doing that. Uh, I know they're working on that Indiana Jones game that will definitely not be shown. They've got the Elder Scrolls 6 in the works, which will definitely not be shown. And then you got the, the non-Bethesda stuff, like I've heard In Exile is doing a first-person shooter. I've heard there's some various projects that are kind of around, floating around that maybe will get announced. I don't know. Th there's a lot of things that they could talk about. and. This is an exciting time because we're we're past that point in the generation where there's kind of been this dry spell and we're, we're getting on to the point now where we're going to start seeing more of the things that Xbox has in their back pocket because Xbox really needs to knock it out of the park with this conference. Going back and looking at all their other presentations over the last few years, ever since I started covering them on this channel. I'd say the average for Xbox has been good. It's been good. They, they, they've done they've done all right in in most years. I can only think of maybe one or two where I was like, mm. but Xbox really needs a win with this show. They've been making a number of good small decisions, some big waves actually over the last year. Ever since 2020, 2021 started, they've kind of just been on this roll of announcing, you know, mostly good stuff besides the the attempted strong arming into buying uh, game pass with the, increasing the price of gold which i thought was just so enormously stupid so and the reason that xbox needs to have a big win with the show is that they in the seven months the near seven months that the xbox series s and x have been out we haven't gotten a single new first party game from them. The the only thing that comes close and that's it, it's not even a it's not even a, a first party or, 
or a second party actually because they didn't publish it is the medium that's really the only thing that's an actual next gen game that came out and let me guys tell you from my own personal experience of playing the medium it definitely ain't a fucking winner for xbox they should have just saved their money on that one so they need to come out and show people hey we've got a bunch of good shit that's going to be coming out not only this year but coming out next year as well and maybe tease some stuff for future years because you know i've heavily criticized playstation over the last few months you know rightfully so because they've been making terrible mistakes and done really questionable things over the last few months but one cannot deny the quality and quantity of the PS5 games that have been coming out from them over the last seven months. With a few exceptions, like Destruction All-Stars was shit, and I personally did not like Returnal. But, you know, Sackboy is very good. Demon Souls is very good. Miles Morales rocks. Astro's Playroom, Masterpiece. Upcoming Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart could be good. Upcoming Horizon Forbidden West looks very promising. New God of War coming out, I'm sure will be good. Gran Turismo, I'm personally not into it, but that's a huge thing for PlayStation. And those are just the things that we know. Sony is one of those teams that is one of those organizations that keep that's keeping their cards really, really close to their chest. They're becoming like Nintendo now, where they just until they want to talk, they're keeping their shit really close to their chest to the point where no one else but anyone internally can see it with xbox though uh, y y the games are there as far as you know what's in development you know we know a lot of things that are in development that i will go over in a sec but we don't really know if any of these or most of these games are ready to be shown gameplay wise and if they're actually going to come out soon. And this is what leads me into the games themselves, because the only two games so far that have been confirmed for the Xbox conference are Halo Infinite and Starfield, and that's coming from that keynote that they released. There's no way that those two games will not be at E3 this year from Xbox and Bethesda. There's no way. So let's start with Halo Infinite. Um. Truth be told, I'm I'm very tired of talking about Halo Infinite. I've made my position on you know what how I feel about Halo Infinite's marketing and potential potential live service shit that they're gonna do. I've made my my thoughts on that note very clearly. And the only thing new that I've got to say about Halo Infinite at this point is that it needs to come out swinging. It needs to come out and look like a fantastic game that is going to come out with a solid release date this is something i also want to stress this thing needs to come out with a release date they can't do this thing where they show a gameplay trailer and then they go fall 2021 they can't do that they need to show a release date horizon forbidden west can get away with it because we've had a bunch of other shit from playstation but like i said this is xbox has not had a first party release this entire generation so far that's unheard of that's practically unheard of they have had a single new one and halo infinite is a big deal this is like one of their giant heavy hitters this is their god of war this is their breath of the wild they need to come out swinging with halo infinite and so far over the last three years it really has not felt like they come out swinging with Halo Infinite. You've got the infamously mediocre showing of it last year. You've got the underwhelming CG trailer presentations of it the, the two previous years before last year. And you've kind of got this overall sense from a lot of people that's like, Oh yeah, Halo Infinite, that's a thing that's coming out. And I'm pretty plugged into the gaming zeitgeist, but I, I really just haven't seen a whole lot of hype for halo infinite like really tangible hype for it and normally i discourage people from hyping up things but for a, a series that's as legendary as halo 
it's like it's kind of weird that we don't really have a whole lot of hype for it at least from what i've seen you know people are looking forward to it obviously but there's not really that that tangible excitement around it and i think you know rightfully so because it's 343 doing it and 343 in my eyes as far as these mainline halo games are zero for two and this new one is doing is doing a live service thing which is which i don't trust that they're going to handle very well and even after all this time i still really don't know what to to make of the story you know a long time ago halo was sold on both its multiplayer and its story you know the story was a big deal when i was in elementary school people wouldn't shut the fuck up about the cliffhanger to halo 2 or what happens in halo 3 when i was in elementary school and middle school you know those were a big deal back then and now no one cares i mean except maybe the diehard halo fans but no one gives a shit about the saga of this new trilogy that they're doing so they need to come out guns blazing with halo infinite and the other game is starfield which <sighs> truth be told i am not really all that excited for starfield maybe if i see it in action and maybe if some of my fears regarding modern bethesda are kind of put to rest i'll get a little interested but right now from all we've got as far as starfield which is just a short cg trailer that came out a few years back and some leaks with like art i'm not really feeling it i, I don't really care like if you were to put starfield and the elder scrolls 6 in front of me i'm throwing starfield in the fucking dumpster and i'm going for elder scrolls 6 and even elder scrolls 6 i have some serious concerns about but i doubt halo uh, sorry i doubt elder scrolls 6 is going to be shown at e3 this year because that thing is like long way off but they're banking on starfield being the big thing but from bethesda this year and I guess I just, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I, I just, I'm not really all that interested in Starfield, honestly. And, and this is coming from somebody who used to be, like, a big Bethesda fan. But these days, I just, I, I struggle to muster up the even, like, fake excitement. A modicum of fake excitement to care about Starfield. And Bethesda did that to themselves when they started releasing shit like fallout 76 and the, the all the buggy crap monetized live service shite that came with that it's just it, it bethesda are like cd project red where they they've killed a lot of my goodwill towards them because you can go back as as early as maybe like 2015 and you'll you'll see videos that are like praising bethesda and how well they're doing and nowadays i'm just like i don't care <laughs> i just i don't care i just whatever I, like when tom howard comes out to talk about starfield which he'll do i'm just gonna be like oh you you're that guy that bullshit about fallout 76 yeah okay dude what kind of bullshit do you got for us this time buddy so that's really my take on starfield um now i looked into all of the the first and second party games that xbox have got under their belt and i guess i'll start with everwild which is that rare game that's been shown a couple times which basically like i said looks like sea of thieves meets princess mononoke which again you you guys know me you you guys know me when it comes to this live service stuff i don't care i i don't i don't care how good sea of thieves is now I don't care if people are excited for Everwild. We don't even know what Everwild is. Hell, we don't, like, Rare doesn't even know what Everwild is. Last time Rare talked about it, they just said, oh, we're still trying to figure out what this game is. It's like, bitch, you've been working on this shit for like two years now and you don't even know what it is? Like, how do you not, how do you not figure that out the moment you start? And it's happened before, like with Anthem, but, still just it's ridiculous that we've seen it you know 
We've seen it, the, the CG trailers, the, these in-engine trailers for it, and, and Rare is still like, Duh, we don't know what it is. It's just stupid. Fable. So the only thing we know about Fable is that it exists. It's developed by Playground Games, who are now owned by Xbox. And we got a CG trailer for it last year. Which, a lot of that shit in 2020 from Xbox was just CG trailers, with the exception of... Halo Infinite and Psychonauts 2, which was in development before they bought Double Fine. And with Fable, I'm uh, to be fair, I'm more interested in Fable than the, the majority of Xbox's stuff that they've announced so far. But I want to see it in action for myself because Fable hasn't been good for many, many years. The only Fable game I really like, or even then, I, I would have to go back and play it, and even then it probably hasn't aged all that well, is the first Fable. I don't remember Fable 2 being all that good. I really did not like Fable 3, and I just stayed away from any of like the Kinect shit that, that they came out with, and Fable Legends, we all know how that went. So I, I trust Playground Games to do something good, they are a talented team, and it's not unheard of for a, a, a company that has been known to stick to one genre to then go into something else it, it's and have it be successful. It's not unheard of. You just have to look at Sony's Gorilla with the, the switch from Killzone to Horizon Zero Dawn and it's like, oh shit, like, these guys can do more than these boring ass Killzone games. So Fable hopefully will be shown and if it is shown I want to see some gameplay. Forza Motorsport, which again, it's another in-engine trailer we got last year, which I don't know to me This is one that's like a gameplay demonstration really isn't necessary it but it would be welcome Because I normally wouldn't care about Forza, but considering it'll be on game pass day one. It's like eh, Might as well. It's kind of my similar thoughts with Gran Turismo Where it's like oh, it's a realistic racing sim Not my thing I'd rather go for something more arcadey or off-road like Forza Horizon. And speaking of Forza Horizon, I'm pretty sure Forza Horizon 5 is in development. I've heard rumors that it's going to be set in Mexico, which is cool. And I actually quite liked Forza Horizon 4. So I'd be down to play Forza Horizon 5 if that gets announced and it's coming out this year, which wouldn't shock me. Of all the things that Xbox were to announce, that would be the least surprising thing that Forza Horizon 5 exists and it's coming out this year that'd be pretty cool and then psychonauts 2 which i'm i pretty sure will be there there's been a rumor too that it's going to get this surprise release date a shadow drop on the day of the e3 conference so that could be exciting there's really not a whole lot i can say about psychonauts 2 at this point it's been in development for a long time all the footage i've seen from it looks looks promising i like the original psychonauts quite a bit and yeah, I'm looking forward to playing it when it comes out on Game Pass day one. State of Decay 3, I do not care. <laughs> I, I do not care about State of Decay 3. Whenever I've dabbled into those State of Decay games, they bore the shit out of me. And this new one where they released, again, another CG in-engine trailer with like a, a zombie deer. Um, it's not gonna look anywhere near as good as that trailer made it out to look. Sorry, like it's true. It's state of decay. It's gonna look like mediocre drivel graphics wise unless Xbox gives undead labs like an enormous upgrade now that they own them But I highly doubt that's going to happen because they're probably not gonna want to blow all their money on making state of decay look look presentable So it's just gonna look like the same janky shit. We've seen from state of decay for the last two entries So state of decay 3 it might be there. I don't know I don't give a shit. It's State of Decay. I don't care. It's not my thing. Avowed, which is the new IP, not necessarily new IP, but it's the new game after Groudon comes out from Obsidian. And this is apparently going to be set in the same universe as Pillars of Eternity, which I was not aware of at the time it was announced. So rather than it being an original fantasy lore it's it's tied to Pillars of Eternity which probably not a bad thing I've never played Pillars of Eternity because those kind of RPGs aren't my thing so but a first person 
RPG RPG that's designed to look like Elder Scrolls, but it's not made by fucking Bethesda. It's made by Obsidian. I'll take it. <laughs> Out of all of the Xbox exclusives, this is probably the one that I'm, I'm far and away the most interested in. Um, or besides Hellblade 2, I guess Hell, you know Hellblade 2, I guess would be the other one, but. With Hellblade 2, I really don't know if we're going to see it, and if we do see it, I'd like to see some gameplay. But considering it's going to be running in Unreal Engine 5, it's probably still a ways away. Um, I, I don't want to watch another... I mean, I guess if they were to announce another one of their development diaries, since I like the development diaries that Ninja Theory comes up with, I guess that would be fine. I would, I'd, I'd suck it up and watch that, but as long as they're not walking around fucking Iceland again, if we actually see gameplay this time, or some kind of progress, that would be nice. I'd like to see that. And Perfect Dark as well, which, uh, that, I'm pretty sure, again, that's another one that's a long ways away, but we saw it at the Game Awards last year, so, and we know it exists. I don't know. It's perfect dark. I, I I've I don't even remember if I've played. I'm pretty sure I have played the original Perfect Dark. I'm pretty sure I, I played it when um, the Rare Replay came out, but I just don't remember because I spent so much of my time playing Banjo Kazooie <laughs> Conquer instead. I'm pretty sure I dabbled into it, but it's perfect dark and it's coming back. So you know, I can't I can't criticize them for that. They're using Rare IP that I told them to start doing. It's just not the rare IP that I'm personally, like, really, really keen on seeing come back, like Banjo-Kazooie and Conquer. But they're using it. They used Battletoads for a very mediocre game. And now they're using Perfect Dark, which I hope will be good. And then you got various other things like, you know, Age of Empires 4. You got this one called um, As Dust Falls. You got Grounded 1.0 that's still in the works. So... As far as anything else that could be there, it's really kind of just, it, it's really up in the air at this point. You know, I, I've mentioned, you know, we could see Forza Horizon 5 there. We could see something new that Bethesda's working on. Maybe that rumored Star Wars game that they're doing. Maybe a glimpse of that Indiana Jones game that I'm sure we'll just get a CG trailer for. Um, they could show progress on some other studio that they've bought, I guess. They could show the new Contrast game. They could show the new in, in Exile game. That's really all I got as far as Xbox um, and Bethesda. I guess I just hope they knock it out of the park. I'm nervous that there that people are kind of blowing up their expectations again. Like, people always do this. They always come into these conferences. They always have their expectations set to, like, the moon. And then their excitement comes crashing down when they don't get the things that they want. This always happens with the new Day to Play. This always happens, with, especially with a new Nintendo Direct. And I'm pretty sure this is going to happen with Xbox, where people's expectations are, like, enormously high. And Xbox has kind of set themselves up for this because they've been quiet over the last year as far as, like, new games and stuff like that. But... This is their time to talk. Hopefully they've got some cool stuff saved up. That's all I'll say. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. If you like to see, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the upcoming Bethesda Xbox conference. Let me know which games you expect to see. And as always, I'm Razorbid Mango. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you all later. Bye.